Kia ora everybody, Chris Fahi here from the Bailey's Insights and Data team. We've got Anku Dakwali and this video will be giving you a quick update on the latest activity in the New Zealand housing market as we enter the month of July 2023. Um, first off, Anku, we're somewhere pretty cool today. We're about to, are we? Yeah, so we're at a cool spot. We're in 904 by 20 Omana North in Milford. Now, this is a top floor seaside level apartment. Uh, it's two bedrooms, three bathrooms on 147 square meters of floor area. Top quality finishes and appliances. It's located in the vibrant and highly sought after Milford area. Uh, so if you want to learn more, please get in touch with the residential projects team using the link in the description. Yeah, awesome. So getting into the market, Anke, we um, had a reasonable level of sales coming into this past month. During the month of May, we had 5,752 sales in New Zealand. Now, this was a similar result to May 2022, which is a positive given that in earlier 2023 sales numbers were generally lower. Yeah, interesting as well, the median house price has been relatively stable over the past couple of months. And the most recent result was 780,000, which was no change on the prior month. Um, so it means that we've now had results that have been flat or rising for four months, albeit um, in a very tight range. Now to give you a sense of what that median house price actually means, um, Anker, we've got a couple of examples from around New Zealand. Yeah, so the first up we have in Auckland, which is 35 Tree Laura Crescent in Hobsonville. Now this is described as a seaside QT where you can walk to the beach. A near new two bedroom, one bathroom home was sold for 785,000 by Cherry Kingsley Smith and Barry Heat from Bailey's in Northwest. Meanwhile, down in Palmerston North, at around that price, you could have had 11 Monarch Drive in Ashurst. So this is described as family-friendly lifestyle. Four-bedroom, two-bathroom home was sold for 780000 by Shelley Grieve and Renee Miller from Bailey's Palmerston North. Um, Method-wise, this property was sold using a set date of sale, which resulted in a multi-office situation, so a good outcome there. And then heading further south, we have 31 Navarra Road in Hallswell Christchurch. Now this is a brand new perfection, three bedroom, two bathroom, standalone home, sold for 778,000 by Angela Webb and Charlotte Heaslip from Bailey's in Christchurch. Now this was purchased by a first home buyer who were moving down to Christchurch from the North Island. And so getting back into the market over the past month, if you've been watching the media, you might have seen a lot of commentators speculating that the market is probably in the process of bottoming out and then we might start to see a recovery over the back half of this year. Um, Anker, if we look at the house price indices, what are we seeing from a data perspective at the moment? Yeah, so from a data perspective, if we look at the house price indices across New Zealand, we can see that the house prices across most regions were very slightly down. For a lot of regions, though, we can see that the latest drops are smaller than earlier in the correction. So this aligns with the sentiment that the market is near or at its bottom now. Yeah, and interesting on, on that theme, we've um, had quite a bit of activity across the Bailey's team over the past month. Mm -hmm. um, so a couple of examples. First up, we've got Angela Rudling and Michael Chi from Bailey's Howick with their listing of 15 Shelley Beach Parade in Cockle Bay. Um, now this one was quite interesting, Anker. Marketed as the ultimate beachfront location and recently completed in Hampton style, this four bedroom, three bathroom hit the headlines when it was featured in one of the biggest uh, renovation Instagram accounts at Three Bird Renovations. Down at the other end of the market, but also on the waterfront, Chris Mangels from Bailey's Akaroa was featured for his listing of a boat shed in Duvshell Bay. And so this is a waterfront position with stunning views over the bay. Um, at the time of recording, One Roof was speculating that this might beat the prior record of 255000 for the sale of a similar boat shed. We also had Susie Wigglesworth, who leads our residential projects team, featured in a One Roof article, and she commented that the development pipeline for medium to lower in apartments is getting smaller. So as the market recovers, there will be likely to be a tight supply of new built homes available. Now in terms of outlook for the market, we mentioned that a lot of commentators are now picking that the market's bottoming out and probably going to recover over the back end of this year. For a lot of these commentators, it appears to relate to interest rates. Mm -hmm. And so we've seen that the Reserve Bank has indicated that the official cash rate is probably now at peak. Mm -hmm. Um, and that means that a lot of that uncertainty around interest rates is starting to go away. Mm -hmm. Anker, if we actually look at the data, what, what are we seeing in the data? Yeah, you can see that the OCR rise is built into the interest rates, with the one-year interest rate rising with the OCR generally, but the five-year mortgage rate has been trending down over several months now. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. Mm -hmm. um, I think one of the other big trends that's probably being underestimated at the moment is migration. And so Anker, we've had quite a big turnaround on the migration front. Yeah, a massive turnaround to positive migration. So we've got more people coming into the country. Uh, the latest migration statistics show 72,300 net migration gain over the past 12 months, uh, compared with a net loss of 19,300 for the 12 months prior to that. 
And so a lot of commentators have been downplaying this because the migrants have been assessed as generally coming from China, India, Philippines, and South Africa. So they'll typically be subject to the foreign buyer ban in terms of existing housing. Um, so for that reason, the commentators think that they're probably not going to buy homes straight away. But Ankara, they obviously need somewhere to live. Yeah, and because of that, they'll, they'll put more pressure on the rental market, likely in the major centres. Um, this will you know, put upward pressure on rents, and which might prompt more first home buyers and investors to enter the market again. Yeah, so one of the reasons that we think that this is important is that if you went back, say, five years ago, the positive migration flow was one of the factors that was blamed for the rise in housing prices. So we think that there's a good chance that that's going to return to the market. Um, so look with that said, we'll wrap up this video here. So massive thanks to the vendor for this property and the Bailey's Residential Projects team for hosting us. Cheers, Anko. Thanks, Chris. And we'll see you next time. See yeah. Ya.